the last five years? Yeah. Where do you get that information? They haven't had any raises in five years. So. Okay, it's different from okay. cut. Uh, no, they haven't had any pay raise in the last four years, and that's correct. And I think probably uh, most of the businesses across the state who are laying off individuals and certainly not considering pay raises are in the same situation. I don't think that when we are losing government jobs, uh, 400 alone in the month of November is a time for us to start giving pay increases. I know the proposal from the LFC is a 1% pay increase, and that is not included in my budget. But you said that there would be uh, the state contributing more to the... Because of the 1.5% that they are currently having to um, contribute addition, in addition to their uh, retirement, the state will take that over and therefore they will receive that 1.5% back in their paychecks. Aside from the, uh, the retirement swap, or, or it doesn't look as if there's any money in the budget for higher pension contribution rates as far as the solvency issue. Is that uh, something that you're opposed to uh, spending more state money to shore up those programs? There is. There actually is. The swap, the 1.5% uh, retirement swap, State employee will no longer have to pay that. The state is proposing that we take that back and continue to pay it. We also have a 0.75% in additional funding that would be from the general fund to uh, shore up that pension fund as well. That's for the, the ERB, is that correct? Okay. Are you anticipating a, a battle or is this a spirited debate on this issue going forward, knowing that LFC did recommend those pay raises? Oh, sure. I mean, I think um, in every legislative session, uh, across the country, there will always be spirited debate. Um, I think that's where hopefully you end up with the best results. Governor, is this um, child care, is this something totally new, or is this oh, no. is it just expanding out of existing? That's correct. Oh, so it's just putting more Oh, yes, absolutely. No, we've had it for several years. In fact, last year, a couple of years ago, I think Governor Richardson cut um, the amount of money, the percentage that was being reimbursed to the child care facilities. Um, I actually put it back to the level that it was before he cut it, and then um, we are now proposing to put enough money in there so that there isn't a waiting list. So, uh, how, why is that something so important? Are we seeing more and more young parents going through some adventure going back to school as one of the Absolutely. Parents who want to or um, aren't able to go to work because of the cost of child care. And if they meet the criteria, then we certainly want to be able to be of assistance to them so they can go back to work or go and learn a new trade so that they can begin a new career in a field that um, suits them or that they can find a job in. Governor, how much money uh, do you anticipate for, or propose for your tax cut proposal to incorporate the single sale of the small business credit? If you want to do that. Sure, thanks, Governor. It should be a little less than $50 million. So it will be uh, it will fit within the total amount of new money available in FY14. And, and Tom, uh, are you proposing presumably over several years to implement those? So which is the largest of, of the proposals out of the box? Yeah, the, the uh, it is phased in over several years, so that that amount increases in the in the out years. Um, and so the the biggest component is probably the corporate income tax rate reduction, and then the second would be the single sales factor election. Governor, do you anticipate that that area is likely to be the source of most disagreement with the legislature? I mean, if you look at most of these proposals, they're fairly similar to what the LFC is recommending, with the exception of how much you've set aside for tax cuts. That is, what does the question is? I'm sorry, do you anticipate that the tax cut issue is going to be where you're going to have the most trouble with the legislature mm -hmm. getting well, I mean, I certainly know that uh, the legislature is well aware of our situation, how dependent we are on federal dollars, and, you know, when you're, um, we're, we're facing the fiscal cliff and they kick that can down the road and we don't exactly know what, how many cuts are going to be coming across the board, New Mexico is, is more vulnerable than many other states, and so I'm hoping that they see that we have to diversify our economy, we have to attract and compete, and in the hopes that they see that we have to have a better environment to compete with our uh, surrounding states, they'll see that this is necessary. We cannot continue to have the high rate of taxes um, and be right next door to Arizona who has a four point 
9% uh, tax and, and we are at 76 and think that we can compete even at that very small level. Um, and so I'm hoping that you'll see that to be more competitive and uh, to diversify uh, are two priorities in order to bring more jobs to New Mexico. But I want to go back to the tax uh, uh, pay raises. We do have a proposal in education for pay raises for teachers and that is for the more effective uh, teachers and it's about 11 million dollars that we've proposed and it could be as high as a 10% increase to a particular teacher uh, or leader in the school um, and depending on their effectiveness in when we have uh, evaluations of those teachers. Governor, uh, you spoke a few minutes ago about economic development and the need to be able to compete uh, and have an advantage over some of states. And back in April, your small business friendly task force stated that state rules and regulations should not be more stringent than federal standards. Earlier this year, I believe it was in July 3rd, both you and Secretary Clifford applied for Section 108 funding to help in economic development at the recommendation, I believe, of the Secretary of Economic Affairs. And to date, this is this the request was for about $42 million. One of the companies that was included in that has already left and gone to Colorado basically stating that it was too difficult to deal with New Mexico government, not the federal government. They said the money's there. And I wanted to know why aren't we doing something with the tools that we have already? And and what is the status of the remaining two that I believe the applications are for about $20 million that the CDBG voted to approve last month? I don't recognize you. What news media? My name is Bruce Lovett, with the spy glass. Spyglass? Yes. What is that? It's a newspaper. I'm sure your folks have read it. Are you sure of that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the spy I'd be happy to if you'd like cover. Thanks. Sure. Yeah, that's a, the Section 108 is a new program from the Housing and Urban Development uh, Department in uh, Washington. And it uh, basically authorizes the states to use their community development money to invest in private businesses. So it's a very, uh, it's a departure. It's a totally well, new. Other states have used it for years yeah. now. So it's a totally new type of program for New Mexico. We've never done this before. So in fact, it has taken some time to roll out the rules and regulations and so on. But it's got, we've got to be very careful about it because we're giving money in an, essentially a pretty risky environment when you're talking about brand new startup companies that we're taking away potentially from our community development funding. So we've got to be very careful as it's really, the feds didn't really provide new money, they just reallocated existing money. But couldn't you use that money that you were, you're looking to do economic development to ensure that so you don't have to expose the state? Uh, and, and actually, it's been my understanding of talking to people who've worked with these programs elsewhere that the 20, say you approve the $20 million for those two remaining companies, that means still $22 million that working with local New Mexican banks could actually pull in about $100 million in economic development for small businesses. Yeah, that, those are pretty speculative, but the, the point is we are moving ahead with the program. We have we have awarded two companies funding under but the program. When I talked to folks in the last few days, they indicated they are very nervous and they don't. They, yeah, I the don't one know. company that left and it was opening its doors in about two months said that it was too difficult to deal with the yeah. state. I can just tell you, $20 million has been awarded to two different companies, and again, it's something we've got to be, keep a very close eye on if we don't want the money to, to be wasted. Yes, sir. Governor, the $11 million plus for uh, teachers that you're proposing, the school staff, that is what is typically called generic pay? That's correct. Do you expect to fight on that one with the legislature? Well, I hope not, because I hope that um, we're putting our kids first, and if we're connecting the progress of our children in the classroom, and our most effective teachers are being connected to that progress, why wouldn't we want to reward our best and brightest to recruit the best in the country to New Mexico. So, oh, and the LFC report, that's right. If you'll share with the, then the LFC report that just came out recently. Not only is there um, good research that we need to change, how we evaluate, if you look at the Gates Foundation just issued this last week a new report talking about the importance of evaluating our teachers based on improved student achievements and observations in the classroom, which is exactly what we're doing. Uh, in addition, we saw the LFC report both in 2009 and 2011, just this last year, saying something's not working and how we are aligning our pay or lack of alignment of pay with improved student achievement. So we've taken a long look at both research and our local uh, research and the Legislative Finance Committee, and we expect a good partnership around um, paying our effective teachers and school leaders 
up to $7,500 in one single year increase. So is that the only way that they're, they would be evaluated, the teachers, based on the student improvement? Um, no, thank you for asking. Um, the new evaluation system we're piloting this year and implemented next year aligned with this new budget proposal is based on improved student achievement over a three-year period um, whenever possible and also another 50% based on observations and locally defined measures. So it's a very robust and very um, extensive multiple measures that go into an evaluation. So, ma'am, uh, Robert, not Stanford University, and I had my hand up because I'm in the public school, so I thought that would help. <laughs> so, Secretary, then how much of it right now is going to work based on the test scores which are really worried about the teacher about? Um, right now, we have 50% based on improved student achievement, so we're looking at progress over time, not a single test score, and 35% of that is based on our standards-based assessment, which just within the last week, yet another report came out and ranked us 15th in the nation when it comes to our standards and assessments. May I ask some follow-ups on education? Where do you feel you stand right now, Governor, going into your third legislative session in terms of convincing legislators and the public um, of any aspect of your ed educational reform program, whether it's A through F, teacher about, or of course, banning social promotion and investing in reading? Well, certainly we have um, been successful at passing legislation in grading our schools A through F. Uh, I think well, as I've traveled throughout the state, um, there's such a clear understanding by all of the students and the teachers and the community um, as far as where they stand as students and as a school and the pride that takes place uh, when they understand or the request for assistance. And that's why some of our funding certainly goes towards those schools that are lower achieving so that we can close that achievement gap because now they're identified and now we know exactly where to put those funds in. As far as the bill for um, the Reading Initiative, last year we asked for $12 million for the New Mexico Reads to Lead, and the legislature did award us $8.5 million. That's how we were able to hire reading coaches, we deployed them throughout the state, and we have 2,000 teachers who have now been trained on us and assisting them to teach children how to read. Um, this year we're asking for $13.5 million. That will meet the request that has been made thus far statewide. It will meet the need that has been requested thus far by school districts throughout the state. And we want to meet that need. They've seen the success. And so the request at this point is 13.5. We're hoping that the legislature will see that need. Because we don't want to retain children in the third grade. We want to make sure in that Reads to Lead program that they're reading at the level they should in the first grade. And before they leave that first grade, they're prepared for the second and from the second on to the third, so that we don't just take a snapshot for the first time ever in the third grade and then realize they're not reading at the third grade level, now we're going to hold them back. We're focusing on investing in them from kindergarten to third, so there isn't a need to retain. So again, ma'am, how do you self-evaluate yourself in terms of your own efforts to, at the midway point of your first term? How do I self-evaluate? Yeah, in terms of educational reform. I think what's especially important is how the public evaluates me and not how I self-evaluate. And how the public evaluates me is more important than anything. Am I keeping my promise to make sure that we bring a better education to our students? Do we bring the tools that the teachers are asking for? Do we give them the funds that are necessary for them in the classroom to teach? And are we rewarding those teachers in the best way ever um, because we know that they are effective and they are teaching our children the way they should? We honor those teachers, and we want to continue to honor them. And so at the end of the day, it's not what I think that is important, but what the public thinks. Can I characterize you know, your relationship with the Democrats in the legislature now after two years, and as you start this uh, third year of your term, how good is it? Are you going to get uh, most of what you're asking for here? No, I don't, I don't expect to always, and no governor ever expects to get everything you ask for. I mean, uh, not even when you have a Democrat governor and a Democrat um, majority in the legislature do you get everything you want. Um, so as a Republican governor and a Democrat-led uh, legislature, I don't expect to, but I do expect to continue to have meetings. I continue to have negotiations with them uh, and advocate for my position as they will theirs. Um, you know, none of this is personal. All of this is, is working towards uh, a goal of providing uh, a better environment for our kids and for the businesses that we keep wanting to attract. Um, and so I think that we have created good relationships with folks on both sides of the aisle. 
we're going to continue to work on that. Um, and I have um, great confidence that being that they've just ran for office, they've been in the community, knocking on doors, listening to folks and what they want to see happen, um, that they will listen to their constituents and, and, and go forward. Governor, you, know, you, don't, you don't have any concerns that uh, last year's election may have poisoned some of your relationship with no. at least some legislators? No, I mean, uh, every election um, is a spirited election. Every election, uh, maybe they're not used to having a two-sided kind of uh, debate, on the record of, of, of uh, you know, candidates, but um, it's an election, and so what do you do but point out the differences between candidates, and then you let the folks decide and vote where they want to vote. Um, I don't think that it has poisoned it. None of it is personal. All of it is based on um, you know, a voting record, and, and I think that uh, people should stand by their voting record and do so proudly. Yep. What do you think some of the changes that Senator Campos and Senator Mary Kay Papin. I know them well. I get along with them well. Um, we've had many meetings together. Um, I'm certainly staying completely out of uh, their decision making. It's up to their caucus, up to them um, who they decide. But I think um, the fourth floor will work with them very well, whatever they decide. Governor, as a justification for cutting the uh, corporate tax rate, you said that's one of the most important things that businesses consider whether or not to move to New Mexico. I want to know. What businesses are telling you that? Because, as I understand it, businesses kind of consider education, oh, sure. quality of life, and everything like that. So, are you talking with businesses that are telling you to cut the, the tax rate? Well, they certainly compare the tax rate, absolutely. The but tax is, rate it, is, is it the most workforce. important? Pardon? Is it the most important, as you said? No, there are, there are many things that are very important. And most okay. important is, number one, that we have the jobs here available for our students to take, and that our students are prepared to take those jobs. And hopefully, they're higher paying jobs and higher quality jobs so that they don't leave the state and go to another state because those higher paying jobs are someplace else. But if we don't have a workforce, but we have the market here, then what's, what is the point? So we've got to do all of it at the same time. And certainly the quality of life, and certainly to make sure that we have um, our students who aren't entering college needing two years remedial studies and millions of dollars spent on remedial studies when they've graduated with a high school diploma. That doesn't make any sense. And so we have to start making sure that our kids are graduating the 12th grade with 12th grade knowledge or greater, and we're not doing that right now very well. Kevin, you mentioned also the, the strength of the state reserves. I know the LSC was brought up yesterday that those might not be quite as strong as we thought due to an accounting issue, maybe even 70 million less was the figure that was given. Is that a, or maybe Secretary Clifford, is that a big concern and is that a, you know, an accurate figure? It is. Thanks for asking. The, uh, this is an issue that we've talked about. Uh, it was recently written up, uh, and um, the, the uh, state has not been reconciling its, uh, if you will, its checkbook to the bank uh, for ever since we brought up the share system. So the implication is that we have a large number of unreconciled transactions. And as we go forward, we're basically going to open a new checkbook to conduct transactions from this point forward, but we'll have to then also engage in the process of trying to reconcile millions of, of uh, prior transactions. We, uh, our accountants have done an estimate uh, of, that this could cost at a minimum $70 million, not all of which potentially is general fund, but we have reserved for that amount in our budget, uh, and that we still preserve a reserve of uh, 11% uh, after that reserve and after our non recurring recommendation. So this is something that's going to take us several years to work out. Uh, it's, uh, it's very unfortunate we just didn't implement the system correctly, these are capabilities the system always had, but whenever you bring up a new system, it's very important that you modify your existing business practices, and that's something we, the state was un, unwilling to do at that time. So we're basically in a position now, we have to modify our practices, we've got to make sure that they're uh, reconciling, and so that for the time being, we have to book uh, contingent liability to try to absorb that, the fiscal impact of resolving those transactions. Okay guys, thank you everybody. Uh, Secretary Scandera and Secretary Clifford are available for questions afterwards between us and the trade.